Hi Fibernetics, this is Tori and today I'm going to talk to you about my top three tips for selling wool online. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if you're a wool producer like a shepherd or a farmer, it doesn't matter if you're a fiber artist, it doesn't matter if you're a wool merchant, all of these tips that I'm going to give you today absolutely apply to you. Tip number one, photos matter. Here's an example of a not great photo for selling wool. Here's an example of a good photo for selling wool. One of the main differences that I see all the time in good versus bad fleece photos is natural light. Anytime that you can get your fleece outside in natural light, that is absolutely the best option. If you are someone like me who lives in Minnesota and half the year it is snowing outside, at least try to get your fleece in front of an open window or something that's letting in a lot of natural light. Take your photos during the brightest part of the day. That really helps people so that they can look at the fleece and really see what they're getting so there's not really a guessing game of like, oh, is that actually the color or is there more VM than I can actually see because the photo is really dark. So whenever you can take your photos in natural light, that is absolutely the best way to go. I will be doing a more in-depth video on how to photograph raw fleeces for sale later, but for now, just know, please take your photos in natural light. Tip number two, don't hide the details. It can be really, really tempting sometimes to look at your fleece and look at the level of VM in your fleece and say, okay, I know this is probably a four, maybe a five, but I'm just going to say that it's a three because I don't want to scare anybody off from buying it. People do this, okay? Be very, very transparent in the description that you're giving of your fleece. Make sure that you say, if it has dirty tips, make sure you take a photo of those dirty tips and include that with your listing so that people can actually see what they're getting. Make sure you take an up close and personal photo. Don't just take a photo from all the way back so that the fleece is like one big pile. Make sure you include a exact representation of what the staple length is. That's also really important for people that are trying to buy a fleece because if they're trying to buy for a specific purpose, they're gonna need to know if this is a three inch staple length or a six inch staple length. Regardless of the breed that you're selling, you need to make sure that you include a staple length in your description. When you go to list your fleece, and you've weighed your fleece so you can tell your buyers how heavy it is and how many pounds are included, underestimate. If you weigh your fleece and it says like seven pounds, 10 ounces, make sure what I always do is I will say seven pounds, eight ounces on the description because I don't want somebody to get my fleece, have a different scale than me and be like, oh my gosh, this is way off. I do this especially if you're selling smaller amounts of fleece. This is very important. Say you buy a pound of fiber and you get it and you open the box and you put it in your scale and it only weighs like 13 ounces. That is a huge, huge no-no. So make sure that you are overly generous in the amount of fleece that you're sending to your buyer. Whenever I have somebody that buys a pound of fiber from me, I always try to include an extra at least one to three ounces just to kind of help make sure that they're getting plenty of fiber. So those are my top three tips for selling raw wool online. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them down in the comments below. And also, you're definitely gonna wanna go check out our email list and sign up for that because we spoil our fiber VIPs like crazy. That will be linked down below. And you can also go to feathertailfiberarts.com.